practitioner of what she called sacred healing beauty. Spas are having a hard time right now because they're only pampering. They're not addressing wellness. I bridged the gap between beauty and healing. To improve my wellitude, I'm trying the 90-minute faciology, face $180 procedure you've probably never heard of because Narayan made it up. It's a combination of three other things you've never heard of. Reiki, facial reflexology, and emotional freedom techniques. Narayan, by the way, also made up her name, which used to be Christy Marie Jones, Naravan, she says. It means protector and uplifter of all those, of all whose perception is as clear, clean, and bright as flowing water. While Christy Marie Jones means just Christy Marie Jones. She's not the only Narayan at the Wellness Center. Narayan is going to touch my face lightly and move some tension out of it. So I was a little surprised when she told me to take off my clothes since I wasn't wearing any clothes on my face. <laughs> Narayan explained that clothes would get in the way of my bad energy's exit. I gotta remember that line. <laughs> <laughs> and keep me from being relaxed. She does not understand that the last time I felt relaxed while I was naked was at nine months old. <laughs> but lying there under a sheet in the dimly lit room, chimes going off all around me a hot lavender scented towel on my face, I do feel sort of relaxed. Narayan applies a mask of diatomaceous earth. Yeah. Yeah. I'm German, by the way, so. You're doing great. Micro, microdermabrasion crystals. Good job. <laughs> lavender, clove, and sweet orange essential oils, which feels tingly and smells awfully Christmassy. She massages that in and then applies a serum of aloe vera and uh, Jehovah oil. I'm feeling pretty great and really sleepy when Narayan tells me she's going to tap out my tension. This tapping, it turns out, isn't tapping as much as really hard, fast banging on the bones around my eyes, jaw, and nose with a stone pestle for about half an hour. I don't know if tension is leaving me, but it is definitely leaving Narayan. <laughs> Once the meat on my face is totally tenderized. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Stay with it. <laughs> she starts putting her hands on various parts of my body, asking me to breathe into those areas. Narayan explains that she's empathetic, empathic, which means that even if I can't feel the negative energies leaving, she can. Often seeing is at colors, as colors. Every so often, she lets out a loud breath like a petulant dragon. <laughs> this, I decide, occurs when I'm doing a good job. Finally, after the negative energy-sucking selenium crystals are scattered around me and the battle of the foot breathing is lost, and we thank the sun, moon, and earth, I get dressed. I am pleasantly out of it and so much at peace that when Narayan comments on the essential oil still on my face, saying, I like things that vibrate, I don't even make a joke. Narayan gives me a diagnosis. Basically, every one of your chakras needs a level of work and opening up and cleaning out, she says. This is not something I have time to do. There's some anxiety that fuels you, she says. You operate from an adrenaline rush. She frowns slightly as she says this, but I take it as a compliment. I leave feeling more confident in my wellness than I ever have. What is your name? Aaliyah. Aaliyah? Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. And the other thing is I'm severely dyslexic, so I couldn't have gotten through it like she did. 
the most important uh, shift in this, and all of the articles I've read mainstream since this whole first wave began 20 years ago, is the final statement. Because it's always done in satire, you know, and it's always done to kid the hole and punch holes in the movement. And it says, I leave feeling more confident in my wellness than I ever have. That's a big step forward for mainstream and for time. And I want you all to consider becoming, those of you that are in the business, petulant dragons. <laughs> and I want to uh, have David Gaines step up here and share a little bit of what he's doing personally. If you'd like to talk with him afterwards, that'd be great too. And, uh, and then we're going to discuss all of your services and how to bring them mainstream with the time that we have left. And, uh, and a little bit of why this is the particular time, why this window of opportunity that has never been opened before, uh, where uh, wellness, holistic healing, and, and such thoughts can go mainstream now. And it's necessary to the destiny of Hawaii to the a very economy of Hawaii. We've got enough flexibility now that even the government and the Board of Tourism and uh, corporate uh, destination management will finally listen to us where we can start presenting everything that you have to uh, offer no matter how weird and whether you want to beat someone's face to hamburger and, <laughs> and all that. Yes, dear. I'm sorry to interrupt. But if, if we do have a certain ability and we really do not want to be renowned for it, can we go through your organization and be able to use our ability for the benefit of mankind? That is a perfectly valid question that we want you to brainstorm in your own organizations and your own cadres afterwards. I'm not an organization and I don't represent a movement. Sorry. I'm uh, actually here uh, uh, before this keynote began was throwing in the towel on my holistic uh, healing center concept that we were trying to fund here in, in nine figures. But those things, have, those doors have opened again. So what I'm here to do is try to share with you as much of my mainstream experience as possible and how to go about it. For instance, it took me two and a half years to connect with a card table 50 feet from my door at the Hilton, uh, the American Express Travel Desk, and I had to go clear to New York to do that. I'm going to save you that two years today and more and show you how to package yourself, the, the, hopefully put you in touch with some of the people that can do that for you, start brainstorming it, and if you can uh, create your own management company out of it, fine. Uh, if you can affect the uh, current 12 destination management companies that book over 80% of corporate tourism for Hawaii, even better. Okay? And let's start with what David is doing. David is a uh, the only thing I know about him is a semi-retired software genius and uh, with some time on his hands and he's wincing over that so he can correct me when he gets up here whatever he wants to do but he's got a powerful concept of taking a wonderful Hawaiian experience to the highest level of tourism so this is the high end of what we're talking about a thousand or fifteen hundred dollar experience to the guy that can afford it and if that offends some people in the room Please table your judgment on it for right now. You don't have to charge for anything you're doing. I'd like to see everybody get paid. And this entire movement, no longer waiting tables for the rich, you know, while they eliminate the, the uh, uh, middle class entirely and turn the entire uh, Gold Coast into a golf hospice. Okay, maybe we can <laughs> turn it into something a little more depth. And, uh, and, and on the other end of the extreme, maybe not leave the entire world to the turtles. Okay, but we need to honor them and we need to start shaping up our planet and doing things right, and doing things ecological, and you have the message. Mainstream in the old paradigm doesn't. It's a worn out message. It uh, is a very old message with limited uh, uh, view, limited wisdom with it. I've got to watch the words I say or here come those Alima tar feathers again. David, please come up here and tell them a little bit of what you're doing. Uh, take some time on it and we'll, we'll take it from there. We'll see where all of you can fit into what